Four months ago, this committee started to present our findings to you, the American people. From the beginning, we understood that some people watching those proceedings would wrongly assume that the committee's investigation was a partisan exercise. That's why I asked those who were skeptical of our work to simply to listen, to listen to the evidence, to hear the testimony with an open mind, and to let the facts speak for themselves before reaching any judgment. Over the course of these hearings, the evidence has proven that there were a multi-part plan led by former President Donald Trump to overturn the 2020 election. Donald Trump lost his bid for re-election, as shown from the testimony of some of the president's closest allies and advisors, Donald Trump knew he lost. Despite this knowledge, Donald Trump went to court to contest the 2020 election, and he lost in court. The Electoral College met and declared Joe Biden the winner, yet Donald Trump continued to pull out all the stops in his attempt to stay in power. What Donald Trump proceeded to do after the 2020 election is something no president has done before in our country. In a staggering betrayal of his oath, Donald Trump attempted a plan that led to an attack on a pillar of our democracy. It's still hard to believe. But the facts and testimony are clear, consistent, and undisputed. How do we know this? How have we been able to present such a clear picture of what took place? Because of the testimony we've heard and that we have presented to you through these proceedings, because of the documentary evidence we've gathered and also made available directly to you, the American people. When you look back at what has come out through this committee's work, the most striking fact is that all this evidence come almost entirely from Republicans. The evidence that has emerged did not come from Democrats or opponents of Donald Trump. Instead, look at who's written and testified and produced evidence. Who has that been? Aides who've worked loyally for Donald Trump for years, Republican state officials and legislators, Republican electors, the chairwoman of the Republican National Committee, political professionals who worked at the highest levels of the Trump campaign, Trump appointees who served in the most senior positions in the Justice Department, President Trump's staff and closest advisors in the White House, members of the President Trump's family, his own White House counsel. I've served in Congress a long time. I can tell you it's tough for any congressional investigation to obtain evidence like what we've received, least of all such a detailed view into a president's inner circle. And I want to be clear, not all these witnesses were thrilled to talk to us. Some up put up quite a fight, but ultimately the vast majority cooperated with our investigation. And what we've shown you over the last four months has been centered on the evidence, evidence that has come overwhelmingly from Republican witnesses. So I say to you again, as I did in June, this investigation is not about politics, it's not about party, it's about the facts, plain and simple, and it's about making sure our government functions under the rule of law as our Constitution demands. Today, as in previous proceedings, my colleagues and I will present new evidence. That includes new testimony from additional Republicans who served in the Trump administration, never be foreseen footage of congressional leaders on January 6th working to coordinate the response to the violence and ensure the people's business went forward. New materials produced to the committee by the Secret Service, details about the ongoing threat to American democracy. Today's proceeding will also be grounded in the facts, but it won't look exactly like all our other hearings. We'll also take a step back and look at the evidence in a broader context, providing a summary of key facts we've uncovered. 
facts relevant to former President Trump's state of mind about his motivation and about his intent. What did President Trump know? What was he told? What was his personal and substantial role in the multi-part plan to overturn the election? For those of you who have watched our prior hearings, some of this evidence will look familiar. For those of you tuning in for the first time, we'll summarize some of the most important facts and we'll urge you to go online and watch our hearing in full. There's one more difference about today. Pursuant to the notice circulated prior to today's proceedings, we are convened today not as a hearing, but as a formal committee business meeting so that in addition to presenting evidence, we can potentially hold a committee vote on further investigative action based upon that evidence.